morning. Hello, eighth graders. Welcome to our technology class week seven. So we are nearing the end of the first quarter. So the end of the first quarter is actually I'm pulling up my little calendar here. So we have this week and we have next week. And then I believe the 11th, so that following Wednesday is the last day of the first quarter. So, hmm. I am probably the nicest teacher you will ever have because I accept your work even until that last day, because why? I want you guys to do well, you know, and I really care about you guys. And I know that in the real world, there's deadlines. And when something is due, it's due. And if you don't give it by the due date, that's it. There's no, you don't get another chance. Zero is zero. And I don't know. I mean, I've thought about that, doing that, but then at the same time, I guess part of me thinks, well, you know, if somebody wants to put in the effort and they do want to do it, I would rather have them learn it than just get to the place where they're like, oh, I'm late. Okay, forget it. I'm not going to do anything. And then they just never learn anything. But at the same time, it really is on you guys, right? If you fail technology class, I mean, you could know in your heart that it was you, it was your choice because you had until the last day to hand things in. And you know that I offered help, right? I offered to go on Zoom with you. I offered to, you know, talk about anything, go over anything with you. And so if you didn't take me up on that offer, then if you come to me and you're like, gosh, why did I fail? Well, really the answer is it's on you. It was your choice, right? We all make choices in our life. And when there's opportunities in front of us to do well and be able to make something good for ourselves, meaning that, gosh, I have until the last day, I can get all this done, then why not do it? I mean, in my opinion, it'd be foolish not to take an opportunity like that and to actually do well and have end your quarter with a good grade, right? So my plan with you guys and so probably what we will do is, well, we, I definitely have a lesson that I'm gonna go through with you guys today. And then next week, um, I probably will have a short lesson and then there will be nothing after that. And so then you will just have to catch up on all the things that you're missing and be able to make the most of this first quarter here. And I know everybody's getting adjusted to being back at school, but again, you have to learn how to set a calendar for yourself. I don't know if it's a paper planner. I have my own personal thing where I keep track of everything that I have to do so I don't forget because being that since now I have to do the videos, right? I have, okay, did I make the video? Did I make the assignment? Did I put it on the website? Did I email it out? So I have to keep track of all these things for myself. And just like with you guys, you have all your things that you need to do. And just because you're not physically coming into the technology room, does it mean that you can just forget about the class, right? Part of being responsible and growing up and being independent is being able to take any situation and turn it for good and make it work for you, okay? That's called being resilient. And so I would suggest if you have a paper planner, if you use it in your phone, electronic, the Google calendar, set reminders that you have oh, I have a technology assignment, it's due every Tuesday, right? I have a robotics assignment, it's due every Monday. And set a day, I don't know if you wanna make it a weekend or a weeknight, set a day where that's like your technology day where you do all of your assignments and you send them in to me. And thank you so much to the kids who have been really um, amazing through this. Every week they send their things in on time. I'm really proud of you guys. You have shown your true character and you have shown that you know you can thrive in any situation. It doesn't matter if things are falling apart, if everything is not is totally a wreck, you still are able to get things done. And that's, I think to me, that's probably one of the most important skills in our lifetime because where everybody goes through ups and downs in life, things change, things aren't always going the way that we wish that they would, but we can't just stop and give up. We have to keep moving forward and we have to keep making the best of everything that's in front of us and still thriving, right? So I'm just kind of saying this hopefully to motivate you guys. If you're, if you're somebody who has completely 
just fell off the wagon, you are completely lost and behind, please spend this next week and catch yourself up and you'll feel really good about yourself that you're ending strong. Okay, guys? So I'm not going to go over everything. We did that in the live thing. So you can always go back to the website and check everything. You know where everything is. All right. So this week, we're moving on. We're on second step lesson three. And so we're talking about handling a grievance. And this is something that happens in our life. Um, it's a common thing where we have some sort of a complaint or an issue with somebody, with something, with an organization. And how do we handle it? It can be online, right? I mean, a lot of us are on the internet now and a lot of things happen on there or it can be something um, in person, right? And so we're going to today take a look at the lesson and there's a little video story about these two girls and they're having a grievance. And so we're gonna take a look at how they handle it. And then we're, we'll talk a little bit about some ways when this happens in our life, how we can handle it respectfully. And we can really build our character, meaning that we don't just have a fit, right? Or get angry, have an outburst, right? We know how to control ourselves, control our emotions, and to act respectfully in every situation that comes our way, right? Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys really quick. So there is a sheet with questions that goes along with this. So I'm opening it up here. So I would suggest, um, you know, maybe you can have this opened while you're watching the lesson. Um, so that way you can type the answers in, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Um, so everything should be typed up, meaning that you can put this in Google Docs if you want and type it up, or you can do it in Microsoft Word. But it does, I would say Google Docs is the easiest way to share it with me, because some of you guys have been sending me attached files that I can't open. So please, I would just go into Google Docs. You can just easily copy and paste this. So the first question says a grievance is, and I already have the answer for you here on the website. Okay, so you're going to fill that in. And now we're going to look at the video story about Vanessa and Lisa. So while you're watching, there's two parts. You're going to answer the questions. How did Vanessa communicate with Lisa? And how did Lisa react? And then, oh, sorry. And then we're going to come back and we'll talk a little bit about it. Okay. So please make sure that you are paying attention because if you're not paying attention, then obviously you're not going to know any of the answers to the questions. And don't just write anything in because I'll be able to tell if you actually watched along with the lesson. Okay, guys? All right. So let me put it on. When you're able to understand the situation, analyze the situation, see everyone's point of view and come to a conclusion and be responsible about it, it makes things a lot, lot easier because you don't spend as nearly as much time worrying or about the way people are thinking about you or worrying about arguments or worrying if you're still friends with so-and-so. It just, it just brings a whole new level of maturity to the situation. Okay, so she's talking about it brings a whole new level of maturity. And this is what I'm talking about for you guys. You're in eighth grade now. So you have to think about how do you act in different situations, right? Are you still acting like an elementary student would? Or are you starting to mature into the high school years, college years, and saying, gosh, is the way that I act a reflection of, you know, where I am? and hopefully where I want to be, right? So you may need to push yourself to mature yourself to the place that you see yourself becoming, right? Um, and so this is part of growing up. And so I hope that you guys will challenge yourself this year to act in a mature way, right? Maybe just even listen to the words that come out of your mouth and then li actually listen to them. Be like, gosh, how do I sound when I talk to other people? Do I sound like I'm a little kid or do I sound like somebody who's maturing into a young adult, 
right? So something again for you guys to start thinking about. So let me put the first part. So pay attention because then you can answer the questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what's wrong? I had five dollars in here. Next, please. Uh oh, where is it? I don't know, it was here yesterday. You know what? I bet Lisa took it. She's always taking my stuff without asking. Excuse me, are you ready to pay? You're holding up the line. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to. to be. I bought that with my own money. Well, now you know how it feels. What are you talking about? I don't go around messing with other people's stuff. Liar! You took my new jacket out of my locker and wore it without even asking. I just borrowed it. Oh yeah, and did you just borrow my five dollars too? What? You always take my stuff without asking. I'm sick of it. Get out of my face. Are you crazy? Stay away from my stuff, Lisa, or you'll be sorry. Okay, so now we're looking at these two girls, right? And so the first question here, it says, how did Vanessa communicate with Lisa? And how did Lisa react? So when Vanessa goes in, what is she doing? She's making an assumption, right? And so when we assume something, we think we know why somebody said what they said or did what they did. And we go in, kind of with this, we make up, we use our imagination, right? And we come up with this whole scenario. Yeah, they did this because they always do this. And we do this with each other all the time. So it could be somebody in your family. Um, it could be with a teacher. It could be with a, a friend, a classmate. Um, and when you make an assumption, right? It, can, it usually ends in a bad place, if not always. Why? Because you're going in and... You're just, you're thinking that you know how the other person is thinking and you're thinking that you know why they did the actions that they did or even if the actions that they did actually did happen, right? So she goes in, she breaks the eyeliner of the friend and now the other girl, Lisa, is just like, why are you doing this? I don't even know what's going on. And she's going in it with kind of like a, a revenge type thing. Like you took my money, now I'm gonna break something that you paid for. And this is like totally the wrong way to handle a grievance or an issue with somebody, right? We can't just go in and attack someone and just be so aggressive about it, right? Because now what could happen? I mean, she could end up wrecking the friendship with this girl, right? I mean, we don't know, we're gonna watch the second part in a minute, but it could really go to a bad place. And maybe this has happened to you before, um, it could even be online. I feel like nowadays with the online thing, this is so easy to, for this to happen because somebody, I don't even know where my phone is, but somebody, you're on your phone, they send you a message like in the chat or whatever, and you can't tell the tone of voice of the person. You can't see their face. All of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, they just texted me this. It sounded so mean. Oh, they don't care about me. They're not my friend. See, I knew it. And you start imagining all these things again, right? Making assumptions, creating something that actually isn't true in your brain. And we do this all the time. And I, it's so easy for this to happen online because we're not face-to-face -face with somebody, right? And you look, even with face-to-face, -face, this happens. So think about how much more likely this is to happen through our social media life, right? Through our digital lives, where it, you know, we don't even know if the person that we're talking to is actually angry or whatever, because we can't even see them or hear them, right? And so this is definitely something for you guys to start thinking about. Um, how can I consider other perspectives and how can I keep calm and stop myself from imagining all these things and assuming all these things um, and jumping to a conclusion um, and then being able to handle a grievance in a respectful way, okay? So I'm gonna, let me put the second part on and then let's see how this is different. Lisa, 
look. I just need to understand what happened with my jacket. I just borrowed it for a little bit. I didn't think it was a big deal. I really wish you would have asked. We borrow each other's stuff all the time. I just didn't think about it that much. Yeah, but there was money in the pocket before, and it's not there now. What? Do you think I stole it? N no, I just... There was a $5 bill in my pocket that I was going to use to pay for my lunch today. I got ready to pay, and it wasn't there. Oh. Oh my gosh, Vanessa. I, I totally spaced. Yesterday, when I was borrowing the jacket, I went to the snack bar with Marco, but I forgot my wallet, so I used the five dollars. I meant to pay you back, I swear. I guess I can see how that could happen, because I spaced things out before, too. It's just, I felt really stupid when I got ready to pay, and I didn't have enough money. I am so sorry. I really messed up your day, didn't I? Yeah, I guess I was in a good mood before this. Well, how about if I share my lunch with you today and next week we go to a movie or something to make up for it? My treat? Really? Yeah, it'll be fun. Okay, thanks. And, uh, sorry about this. <laughs> Buy you a new one? Sure. Okay, so when we look at now the second part of the video, um, how, what did you notice was different here? And hopefully your thought is that they were being more calm and respectful with each other and really trying to understand each other's perspectives, right? And I know this might seem like a silly little video, but I feel like it does help us to kind of stop and look at ourselves and be like, gosh, is this how I act? You know, when my friend, something that I don't know, like, you know, again, going back to the text situation, you know, where maybe you do have some sort of a text conversation last night, and then today you're acting differently in school because you think, oh, they weren't being nice or their tone of voice or whatever. Oh, and, and so then you have this whole imagination, you come in and you act a certain way towards someone um, because of a misunderstanding or an assumption um, through a message or something, right? Um, and so when we look at the way they were communicating this time, we can see that it really was um, just, it was more, it was a mature way of communicating, right? To be able to accept responsibility for your actions, your words, and then to be able to think of how you can make it right with somebody. And if you really care about someone, then especially a friend, then you're going to have to learn how to work through grievances because people aren't perfect, right? None of us are perfect. These kinds of things happen, right? And if we don't know how to handle them, then we're not going to really have any friends, right? We have to learn how to move through things um, with people and be forgiving and be open to admitting when we, um, you know, made a mistake. So some tips for this are explaining your own perspective clearly, right? So you always want to make sure that you are explaining from your point of view um, how you see it. And then also considering the other person's perspective, right? So it's not always about you, right? And kind of like what happened to you? It's also about, okay, well, what about them? Let me hear their side of the story. Being assertive. So you don't wanna be aggressive where you go in and break one of something of theirs. You want to be assertive where you're sharing how you feel, but again, in a respectful way, and you avoid blaming language, right? We don't blame people, um, especially a friend, right? Or anybody, because then think about it, it just makes it harder to work through things when we just go in kind of with this blaming thing. Um, so on the last screen here, it just says handling a grievance, keep an open mind, keep a positive attitude, and use the skills that we just talked about, okay? So the rest of your assignment here um, is part two, and then it gives you a, another scenario. So it says, read the scenario below and answer the questions. A missing book. Character B has taken an important book from character A's locker. Character A, you need the book for the project and you spent all of your lunch time looking for character B. You're upset and you must address the problem with character B. From character B's perspective, your perspective is that you only borrowed the book and you're going to return it. 
So it says, if you were character A, how would you handle the grievance respectfully? Share what you would say and do to handle the issue. So you're gonna read this and then um, type a few lines of how you would handle this, okay? And hopefully in a respectful way. So you're not gonna go up to the person and be like, you stole my book and then go in their locker and like rip their book or something, right? Because that's not gonna be respectful. You know, that's kind of like childish, right? We think back to like kindergarten. Oh, they took my toy. I'm going to take theirs, right? And so we need to become adults who know how to handle grievances. And gosh, you know, it's really sad because we look at some of the adults in our world, right? Some of these people that are in positions of authority and it really is tragic, right? They don't even know how to handle a grievance in a respectful way. So thankfully, you guys are taking this class when you're in eighth grade. So by the time you are an adult, you'll be thinking back, oh, yeah, I remember when we did that lesson. I don't want to act like a kindergartner when I'm like 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or however many years old. And I'm, you know, at my workplace. I don't want to act like a kindergartner like some of these adults do, right? These people who are older than us, right? I, I know when I was growing up, I learned these things and I learned them through going to work, right? I got my first job in middle school, actually. And then all through high school, I always worked, college always worked. I've been working for many years at so many different jobs. And I learned that I had to be assertive. I had to be respectful. I had to really learn how to communicate with all different kinds of people, right? And even when my manager, maybe I had a grievance with them, I had to learn how to handle it. And so this is something that really is important in our life. And so I hope and pray that it will kind of click for you guys early on. So then as you grow up, you will know how to act mature and how to act respectful in every situation. And that's going to really open a lot of doors for you guys, because that is something that I think um, is probably a skill that's way more important than any other skill in our life. All right, guys, so that is your assignment. And then you also do have a typing assignment this week. It's the three minute typing test. So guess how long it's gonna take you to do your typing? Three minutes this week. Do you think if you don't do the three minute typing test, I'm just gonna be like, gosh, you couldn't give up three minutes for your typing. That's pretty crazy to me, right? So, um, second step lesson three, type it up. Do not uh, give me some sloppy handwriting that was like PDF scan. I would like it typed in Google Docs and then do your three minute typing test. Okay. And catch up on anything that you are behind on. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.